Hey guys, this is Matt with bleepinjeep.com. Today I'm going to show you how to remove the stock leaf springs and install the Rough Country lifted leaf springs. But this is just a tiny portion of a much longer video on how to install an entire Rough Country long arm lift. If you look down in the description below, you'll find links to all of the lift component how-to videos as well as the full length version. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the Bleep and Jeep channel right here and also check out Rough Country's YouTube channel at Rough Country. TV. Okay, so the first thing that I've done is taken the jack, lifted up the rear of the vehicle at the center of the differential there. Um, then I put these two jack stands underneath the frame right here, and I took off the wheels. Now, I haven't let it down yet, the jack, because um, we need to take the ends of the shocks off first because that's going to be our limiting factor at this point. Now I'll loosen up all four nuts on top of the U-bolts here. You'll need a deep socket for that. If they're too stubborn, you might have to start them by hand. Now I can take off the U-bolts and the plate. And then drop the axle. I'm just going to do this one at a time so that the uh, axle doesn't actually fall off. Alright, now we need to get the spring off of here. And to do that we need a 13 16 or 21 millimeter socket. Now this is where we need to come up with something creative because as I thought, that thing is on there good. So, I've pounded that on really good. It's a six point socket instead of a 12 point. That way it won't uh, strip the head. But now I need to figure out how to turn that. Let me go get the jack. Okay, safety glasses on. I've got a jack under here. Let's see if we can break this free. This isn't the best idea, but it's all I can manage right now. Okay, well I guess it worked, but I still can't budge it by hand, so I guess I'm going to have to do this a thousand times, or maybe get out a ten foot breaker bar. After about five hours of hard work, you'll have that sucker right out of there. Now only three more to go. Now we're going to do the same thing on the back side. Don't bother removing the shackle from the spring right here. We're just going to take the whole thing out with this one bolt. Okay, now we're back here where the rear shackle goes, and the directions say that you need to cut or grind off this bolt right here. And for the reason for that is because your new shackle is going to contact that bolt when it swings back. Now, you might want to go ahead and cut that off or grind it off, but I'm just going to remove it. And the reason being, I'm going to put a new bump around here anyway, so I'll be messing with it shortly. And, um, it's got you know what six or seven other bolts holding it on there so I think we'll be fine without it. Alright so let's put these shackles together it's pretty simple we want it to look just like this one there's two bushings and a metal sleeve that go inside this hole I'm going to use some grease just to uh, make everything go in smoothly
Alright, now there's two different length bolts provided and they're very similar but they're different. This shorter one goes on the top of the shackle here and the longer one goes at the bottom. So I've marked that with Sharpie. Alright, and since these are so prone to rusting, I'm going to use some anti-seize on there too. Hopefully that will help me out in the future. I'm just going to snug these up for now, but not tighten them. Alright, it's time to put that spring in, but since we're lifting this bad boy up, we're going to have to drop the axle down further. That's as far as it'll go at the moment. I might have to loosen up the other spring first. Let's give it a shot. Alright, so we need to reuse one of these bolts. I've uh, wire brushed it and I'll use some anti-seize on there for good measure. A lot of anti-seize. And I'll take out the slack but leave it loose for now. Then I'll line up the other side and put this bottom bolt in here. Alright, now I'm going to leave these loose until I get it back on the ground, then we'll tighten them up after that. Okay, so I've loosened the other end so that I can maneuver this around a little bit. Now I guess I should have shown you this before, but there's a pin that goes through here. On the bottom it sticks out a little bit, and on this plate down here there's a hole. So what we need to do is line those up. Just like that. Now all we need to do is put this plate on top. Well, you should put the plate on top. Doesn't seem to quite fit. So in that case, what I did was I just drilled it out to three quarter with the same bit that we used earlier on the front part of the lift. And now it fits just fine. It was really only like an eighth of an inch or maybe even less there that to clearance that. Now what we need to do is find the right U-bolts. Now uh, Rep Country provides you with two sets. You want to use the set that fits the tightest. Um, depending on which axle you have, this would be uh, the Dana 35 and the Chrysler 8 and a quarter. So I've got the 35 on here. This fits rather snug. And then we're going to put it up through here. And then put the bolt, nuts and bolts on. Of course, I mean washer and nut. Now what we want to do is tighten these down to spec. Um, but on these, you always want to come back and check them for tightness in about 500 miles or 100 miles and then 500 miles because these tend to loosen up. So um, after we get these tight, we'll come back and check them after driving around for a little bit and then once again in another 500 miles. Alright guys, this side's almost done minus tightening the bolts on the ends here. Of course you want to do the same thing on the opposite side. But we also need to change the brake line and the shocks, so let's do that. Sweet! Check it out guys, there's a lot more work to be done but we're making progress. Now remember this is just one video of many videos that we did on that entire lift. Now make sure to subscribe right here to the Bleepin' Jeep channel. Also check out the website bleepinjeep.com. We've got t-shirts, we've got stickers, we've got this band-aid sticker, we've got all kinds of great how-to videos for you as well, bleepinjeep.com. Also, what I want you to do is go over to Rough Country's YouTube channel at Rough Country TV. Subscribe over there, then let me know in the comments section that you have subscribed. Once you do that, Rough Country is going to give away a free $50 gift certificate, a t-shirt, and some stickers once a week. So make sure to subscribe over there to Rough Country TV. Leave your comments and questions below. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay guys, I hope you learned something there. 
I want to thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing and supporting the Bleep and Jeep channel. Now we've got a few options for you. First of all, these videos can be costly and take a lot of time to do. And if you want to contribute, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, the option for that is right over there. Also, we'd love for you to check out the t-shirt store. The link for that is right down there. We've got these t-shirts, these t-shirts, this hat, and more at bleepandjeep.com store or that link. Also, we'd love for you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That option is right below. It's free. You get updates via email every week when we upload a new video. Also, we'd love for you to check out the website, bleepandjeep.com, or click this link right here. We've got all kinds of off-road videos. We've got how-to videos, off-road parks, and discount coupon codes, and more. So check that out, bleepandjeep.com. All right, guys. Thank you very much for subscribing and supporting, and we'll see you in the next video.